Hi class, my name is Seth Lovely, and today I'll be talking about the issue of the media's effect on the Ferguson, Missouri uh, shootings of M Michael Brown, a young African-American man who was shot uh, several times by a white police officer. Um, you know, it's a really controversial issue. Not only is uh, police brutality an issue, but the issue of race is something that has been predominant throughout our whole society. And uh, as a result of that, there were uh, mass mayhem, you know, riots throughout the entire state, um, and all kinds of protests that had been going on. I believe that the media wants to be on the right side of race. And really what I mean by this is, you know, that um, they see the majority of, you know, our nation is white people. Um, you know, we're the oppressors in a sense because of the way our history has panned out, what, uh, you know, what happened a long time ago. Um, and society will always look at this, uh, you know, as, you know, a power issue in our, in our society, which is kind of unfortunate after all the progress we have made. I believe that in this course, one of our main issues that we focus on is First Amendment rights. Um, and because of that, I believe this case is also a First Amendment concern solely because of the fact that these reporters do have the right to report on what they please. Of course, um, only to a certain extent, but in particular with this case, reporters blurted out false facts which you know led to riots and mass mayhem and all sorts of protests throughout uh, Ferguson, Missouri. Um, they took eyewitness testimony, which is also very biased. Um, a lot of the time it doesn't really happen in court. You know, they're not under oath with what they're saying. There's no cross-examination. Um, they also took it from, you know, civil rights activists who are biased. They took it from the family who is mourning their, you know, their son's death. The media did so based on a particular set of facts and assumptions that they then broadcast to viewers who were inclined to reject or accept the fact of a bad police shooting based solely on what they were told. In the society we live in today, you know, media really does have such a huge impact on our beliefs and uh, as a whole, um, even after all of the progress we have made throughout our history to try and dissolve the, you know, the racial line between white, black, and even other races. Um, we really uh, only make that line bigger each and every day through incidents like this and other things. Um, and, you know, the media really helps paint a bad picture of us trying to better things in our world. Um, shortly after the Ferguson shooting, I think it was within months, uh, a white unarmed man was actually shot by a black police officer. Um, when this did happen, there was literally no media coverage going on about this solely because of the Missouri uh, shootings of Michael Brown. Um, it's really upsetting because, you know, it's they're highlighting the ongoing uh, racial issue of white versus black, um, rather than, you know, black versus white, so to say. Um, not saying that there ever, this was a racial issue, but um, the media actually portrayed it out to be, uh, you know, a racial issue, which is really upsetting. Um, because, you know, just as black lives matter, white lives do as well. With so many people in the media, it's not about facts. It's about creating a narrative. Sadly, a lot of division in our country is a result of that. This is just a small example of uh, how the media is always looking for a mm -hmm. riveting case or a riveting story to report on. And, uh, but more importantly, they're always looking for something that's going to generate controversy. Um, something that is going to generate controversy is, of course, the issue of race, which is something that has haunted and plagued our nation throughout our entire history. Um, and because of this, the media is just too hot to jump the gun uh, and report on something without gathering facts. You know, they base their stories on assumptions and eyewitness testimonies um, and obviously people who are activists, you know, civil rights activists, who are all very biased people. Um, in this case in particular, uh, the families were put uh, on camera and asked to speak their minds about what happened. These are all people who are very biased, who are going to give very one-sided answers rather than cold hard facts, which were, which were later released by police saying that you know, there was a struggle and that Michael Brown did reach for the officer's gun in an attempt to kill him. Um, and as a result, officer safety laws state that, you know, if you ever do feel in danger, that you have the right to protect yourself, as this officer did by killing Michael Brown. Um, you know, this, 
this has happened before. One big case in particular is the Trayvon Martin case where, uh, you know, the same issue. There was a struggle, and um, unfortunately someone's life was in danger and someone else was killed because of it. Um, but here, you know, the main thing is that reporters, you know, they pitch an idea of a racial issue, um, which usually generally gets the most media hype because it's been something that has plagued us and haunted us as a nation for so long. Um, but truthfully, lives are at danger here. Um, it could have been white on white or black on black. But either way, somebody was going to get hurt, and as a result of that, um, someone had to save themselves. It's how reporters and commentators talk themselves into thinking they're just covering a story when they're already acting as partisans. They usually start with claims, claims made by the family of a young man who has been shot, or by the family's lawyers, or by community activists, all of whom are biased. A white person can never be a victim. It just can't happen. That's not permitted. That's not allowed because it isn't the case. The whites are the oppressors. They're the majority.